Now with the playing of our national anthem by the Kismet Temple Shrine Band. We approach game time here at Shea for the middle game of the three-game series between the Mets and the Dodgers. Here are the lineups for tonight's game. For the Dodgers, Wes Parker will be at first base batting leadoff. Ron Hunt playing second base hitting second. Willie Davis in center field batting third. Ron Fairley, the right fielder, hitting cleanup. Jim LaFever will be at third base, batting number five. John Roseboro behind the plate, batting six. Al Ferrara in left field, hitting seventh. Gene Michael will be at shortstop, batting eighth. And on the mound, batting ninth, the pitcher who has more lifetime victories against the New York Mets than any pitcher in the National League Right-hander Don Drysdale. Drysdale against New York in the five seasons has won 19 and lost three. For the New York Mets, Bud Harrelson will be at shortstop leading off. Eddie Cranepool playing first base and hitting second. Ed Charles will be at third base, batting third. Tommy Davis in left field hitting cleanup. Jerry Butchek playing second base and hitting number five. Leon Jones in center field batting six. Ron Sloboda will be in right field and Ron will hit seventh. Johnny Sullivan behind the plate. Sully will bat eight. And on the mound, batting ninth, right-hander Chuck Estrada. Chuck making his first start for the New York Mets. The umpires in tonight's game, and they are coming out to the plate now. This is Tom Gorman's umpiring crew, and tonight Tom will be working the plate. Tony Vinzon will be at first base. Paul Pryor will call the plays around second, and the umpire at third will be Bob Ingle. Ingle works the plate in the opening game of the series last night. Tomorrow night, the last game of the three-game Dodger visit. Claude Osteen pitching against Jack Fisher, and that should be a good one. Both Osteen and Fisher have been pitching excellent ball. Thursday, the Mets have a day off. Friday night, the Atlanta Braves come in for a four-game weekend series that will conclude the current homestand. The Braves will be here Friday night, Saturday afternoon, a Ladies' Day game, and a doubleheader on Sunday afternoon. Following the Sunday doubleheader, the New York Mets will be flying to Los Angeles for their first trip to the West Coast this year, and it will be their longest road trip of the year. A five-city trip with the Mets going to Los Angeles, Houston, San Francisco, Pittsburgh, and Chicago. They wind up the long trip with the Sunday doubleheader in Chicago and then come back to Shea. Now the conference breaks up at home plate. And the New York Mets will be taking the playing field. We'll check the action for you. In the National League, one day game was scheduled in Chicago, and that game was rained out. The Cincinnati Reds and Chicago Cubs postponed rain in Chicago. And now here are the Mets taking the field. Tonight, the Giants and the Phillies at Cotty Mike Stadium. Bob Bolin will be pitching for the Giants against Larry Jackson. The Giants beat Philadelphia 3-1 to one by scoring two in the ninth inning last night. Gaylord Perry besting Jim Bunning in a tough pitching duel. St. Louis playing at Atlanta. It will be Steve Carlton against Wade Blassingate. And Pittsburgh meets the Houston Astros in the Astrodome. In the American League, the Yankees again are in Baltimore. Mel Stottlemyre, three and two against left-hander Frank Bertano. Boston plays at Detroit. They are underway in Cleveland. Washington nothing, Cleveland nothing at the end of two and a half. Pete Rickard is the Washington pitcher, and Gary Bell is going for Cleveland. Chicago plays at Minnesota, and the Minnesota Twins have knocked the White Sox out of first place. Kansas City plays at California later tonight. For those of you who missed the results 
of last night's ball games in the major league. The New York Mets defeated the Los Angeles Dodgers 5-2 to two on the five-hit pitching of Tom Seaver. San Francisco beat Philadelphia 3-1, to one, and Pittsburgh down Houston 3-1. to one. Over in the American League, Baltimore blanked the New York Yankees 7 to nothing. Cleveland 5, Washington nothing. The Minnesota Twins are playing 500 ball for the first time after knocking off the White Sox again, 8 to 7. And it was California 6, Kansas City 3. So the Detroit Tigers lead the White Sox by a half game in the American League. Cincinnati enjoying a two and a half game lead over St. Louis in the National League. First baseman Wes Parker, batting at 248, will be leading off against Chuck Estrada. Tonight's game, as far as Estrada is concerned, representing a big opportunity for him. Chuck has not been a starter in the major league since 1962. Got off to a great start with the Orioles. Won 18 games his rookie year, 15 the following year, and then developed arm trouble. Estrada, 29 years old, a six-footer who weighs 185 from Santa Margarita, California. This year, Chuck has worked exclusively in relief, has won one and lost none. Last year, he was with the Cubs briefly, but spent most of the year at Tacoma in the Pacific Coast League. Lifetime in the major leagues, Estrada has won 50 and lost 42. Here's the windup by Chuck, and the fastball is outside in the high ball one. Wes Westrom has been anxious to give Estrada a starting assignment. He feels that he can be a big help to the ball club and that he certainly needs more work. On the outside corner of strike, one ball, one strike. Estrada has pitched only seven and two-thirds innings this year. So much cold weather and so many postponements. The one-one delivery, way outside, two and one. Now Johnny Sullivan goes out in front of the plate before returning the ball to Chuck Estrada. The Mets and Dodgers just underway in game two of the three-game series. Now Chuck takes his sign from Sullivan. Here's the windup and the pitch thrown way up high. It's ball three, three and one. Ron Hunt waiting on deck, and then Willie Davis. Inside ball four, and Parker reaches on a walk, leading off the ball game. Batting in the second position. That brings up Ron Hunt. Ron hitting 263 with 11 runs batted in. He was held in check by Tom Seaver last night. Helped the Dodger cause with a great defensive play to rob Eddie Cranepool of a base hit and choke off a big inning. Willie Davis comes out on deck. Now Estrada up in pitching position. Here's the pitch on the way. He's around a bunt, doesn't offer, and the pitch is high. One ball and no strikes. Nights are still cool. The temperature about 55 here at game time. This was a beautiful day. Eddie Crane Bull holds against Parker. And the pitch is over for a call strike. One ball, one strike. Control of the pitchers has been surprisingly good considering the number of postponements and the lack of work. One ball, one strike to Hunt. There goes the runner. Here's the pitch fouled back toward the dugout. No play. The Dodgers playing hit and run. The ball fouled off by Ron Hunt. And it's one ball and two strikes. When 
Chuck Estrada first came up with the Baltimore Orioles. In 1960, he was strictly a fireballer. He can still throw very hard. But pitchers rarely can throw as fast after coming back from arm trouble as they once could. Now, throw to first, not in time. Estrada used to get by with his fastball and slider. Last year, he developed a pretty good curveball for the first time. Now, Chuck into the stretch. The one-two delivery. Just missed the inside corner. It's two and two. If the Mets win tonight, they will be just percentage points behind the Dodgers. Now Chuck Estrada eyes the runner, Wes Parker. And the pitch to Hunt, lined hard, bearing foul down the left field line. Hit hard, but pulled foul by a couple of yards deep down the left field line. For the Dodgers, Jim Gilliam is on the coaching lines at first. Preston Gomez is coaching at third. The Mets defensively have Eddie Cranepool at first. Jerry Butchek flying short. Bud Har- Jerry Butchek at second. Bud Harrelson at short. And Ed Charles is at third. In the outfield, Tommy Davis in left. Leon Jones in center. And Ron Swoboda in right. Now a throw to first. Not in time. Now Ron Hunt steps out. Now Chuck Estrada. There goes the runner. Here's the pitch. A swing and a miss. The pig by Sullivan. The slide three. Parker stole the base. That is his fifth of the year. The pitch was a curveball, which helped him a little bit. Good curveball by Estrada that struck out. Ron Hunt, a tough man to fan. Now Willie Davis, the batter. Willie hitting 286, has two home runs, and seven runs batted in. He hit his second home run of the year in the eighth inning of last night's ball game. It came with the bases clear. Down comes the pitch to Willie. A little bit high, ball one. Walter Alston has Ron Fairley batting in the cleanup spot. Now Parker leading off second. Here's the pitch by Estrada, and the fastball is outside and high, 2-0. and Well, the Dodgers have been the most successful ball club in the National League for the last 15 years. Walter Alston, the senior skipper of the National League, and certainly by far and away the most successful. In his 13 years as the Dodger skipper, the Dodgers have won the pennant six times. And he was the first Dodger manager to bring a World Series to the Dodgers, a World Series championship. Now inside and high to Willie Davis, ball three, it's three and oh. Now Estrada is behind on Willie Davis, three and oh. Wes Parker on first base and one man out. Let's see if Davis gets the green light. Now Willie decides to step out to double check on the sign. Now Chuck Estrada makes the one second stop. Down comes the arm. Fastball inside, ball four, and Willie Davis walks. So Estrada now has walked two of the first three. And it brings up Ron Fairley, the right fielder. Ron Fairley, number six. Ron hitting 267 leads the Dodgers in home runs and runs batted in. Five round trippers and 21 RBIs. Ron Fairley hit number five in last night's game. Both Dodger runs came on solo home runs. Crowd still gathering at Shea. We're in the first inning. 
Here's the pitch on the way. A wild pitch all the way to the backstop. Rounding third is Wes Parker. Moving on to second, Willie Davis. Now the sign is going to the Mets bullpen, and we're going to get warm-up action. Jack LeMabe is starting to warm up. John Sullivan and Chuck Estrada are talking it over midway between the mound and home plate. Wild pitch by Chuck was far over the head of Johnny Sullivan. It was wild in the true sense of the word. And now the Dodgers have runners on second and third with one out. One ball and no strikes on Ron Fairley. So Chuck Estrada in a tough spot here in the opening inning as the result of the two walks and a wild pitch. Here's the windup, the pitch to Fairley, way up high, almost a wild pitch. Sullivan had to straighten up to grab it. Right now, Chuck is far out of the strike zone. Two balls, no strikes to Ron Fairley. Here's the 2-0 delivery, ball free. He's high and outside. He's been missing high with his fastball. But Harrelson now asks for time, and he comes in from the shortstop. And West Western is coming out of the dugout. He wants to talk to Estrada. Jack LeMabe is on call in the bullpen. Estrada trying to get settled down. He has worked very little this year. He figured to be a little bit rusty, but also figured that if he could get by the first inning or two, he might very well pitch himself into a good groove. Estrada's arm is all right. He's throwing the ball hard again. But has not worked enough to be sharp with his control. It's 3-0 and oh as the conference breaks up. Ron Fairley steps back in. Wes Parker is on third. Willie Davis on second. Here's the windup, the 3-0 pitch. Outside, ball four. He tried a curveball and missed with it. The bases are loaded, and Jim Lefebvre's coming up. Well, the rooms are all full. There's no place to move anybody in. Jim Lefebvre hitting number five in the order. Good hitter. Lefebvre hitting 297 with 18 runs batted in. Batting left against Chuck Estrada. The infield and the outfield are round to right. Curveball hit on the ground down the first baseline. Fair ball. Brain pool to Estrada covering in time. In the score comes Wes Parker. And the runners advance to second and third. Willie Davis to third and Ron Fairley to second. Brown ball pulled on the first baseline was handled deep behind the bag by Green Pool. The Fever gets the run batted in is 19th. The batter is senior veteran John Roseboro. Roseboro hitting 296. Here's the windup by Chuck and the pitch to Roseboro. Outside, ball one. Jim Lefebvre figuring that Estrada, after walking three in a, in a row, would be trying to slip one right down the middle, and he went right after the first pitch. This is over, a fastball for a strike, one and one. One ball, one strike on Roseboro. Runners on second and third, two men out. Now the 1-1 delivery. Curve is pulled foul. Lands on the dugout roof of the New York Mets. One ball, two strikes.
Willie Davis on third and Ron Fairley on second. One run in. Estrada now for the first time working in front on the batter. The count is one ball and two strikes. Here's the windup by Chuck and the pitch on the way. Outside and high, two and two. Pitching two and two. Way outside, ball three. Now Estrada three and two on John Roseboro. Chuck was working in front with a count of one ball and two strikes, but now the string is up. The on deck batter is Al Ferrara, the left fielder. Here's the payoff pitch. Ball four. That's the fourth walk of the inning by Chuck Estrada. And the bases once again are loaded. It brings up Al Ferrara, the left fielder, and a right-hand hitter. Dodgers have a lot of left-hand hitting to throw at you with their switch hitters. Wes Parker and Jim LaFever. Of the first six batters in the lineup, Ron Hunt's the only one to hit right-handed against Chuck Estrada. Now Ferrara comes up. Here's the windup by Estrada, and the pitch to Ferrara. A drive hit toward the gap in left center field for a base hit. Willie Davis has scored. Ron Fairley is coming in to score. Rounding third and heading home is Johnny Rose for all the relay to the plate. Not in time, and it gets away. Rounding third is Ferrara, and he'll hold there, and he cleans the bases. basis with a triple to left center field. Now Wes Westrom is on his way to the mound. Three runs batted in for Al Ferrara. It's now going to be scored as a double instead of a triple. It will be scored as a double and third on the throw when the Mets made a play home trying to get Roseboro, the third man across the plate. And Jack LeMabe is coming in the ballgame. Well, Estrada was fighting his control. He couldn't get the ball over. When the bases were loaded for the second time, it put him in a position where he had to come into the hitter. He had to throw a strike. He made one too good, and Al Ferrara doubled to left center field, driving three runs in. And a tough start for Chuck Estrada. The Dodgers lead four to nothing. So while Jack LeMabe is coming in on the golf court to replace Chuck Estrada, let's pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. Hi, neighbor. When the rooster crows at 5.45 a.m., it's time for the Chanticleer. 12.15, tune in for the farm paper here on WGY Schenectady. Bob Murphy with Ralph Kainer and Lindsey Nelson from Shea Stadium. Right now, a dejected Chuck Estrada walking slowly toward the dugout. The start had been all important to Chuck. He had waited a long time to get it. But unfortunately, on this particular night, he was rusty, probably from the lack of work, the fact that he had worked only seven innings and simply could not get the ball where he wanted it. He walked four men, and all four who reached on a walk have now come in to score. Jack LeMabe come again. For Jack, his seventh appearance, is joining the Mets after being acquired from the Chicago White Sox. 
Now, Mabe has been pitching well in relief, particularly in his last two outings against St. Louis, working a total of three innings and giving up no runs. With a white sash last year, Jack LeMabe won seven and lost nine. Jack is from Farmingdale, Long Island, New York. Estrada leaving the game after two-thirds of the opening inning. At the moment, has given up four runs, allowed one hit. A very big hit indeed by Al Ferrara. A double up the alley in left center, driving three runs in. Estrada walked four and struck out one. He struck out Ron Hunt with a curveball on a hit and run play. And Wes Parker slid in safely to second base. And that was a key in the inning, too. Now Gene Michael, the shortstop, is up against Jack LeMabe. Al Ferrara on third, two down. Pitched by LeMabe. Foul ball hit back toward the crowd and out of play. The Dodgers cashed in their opportunity. They have four runs in on one hit. Now the windup by LeMabe, and the pitch a pop foul outside third. Charles moving over beyond the coaching lines is under it, and he has it beside his out. For the Dodgers, four runs, one hit, no errors, one left. And the score in the middle of the first, the Dodgers four, and the Mets nothing. Omri Garage Albany is celebrating its fifth annual Imperial Week with the largest selection ever of new and used Imperials at unbelievably low prices. Omri's Art Neat invites you to test drive any one of the top condition, late model used Imperials that are ready to go. You can choose from two- and four-door sedans, many equipped with the exclusive Imperial Extras. Trade up now at Armory and receive top dollar for your present car. Chances are it will more than cover the down payment on a mint condition late model Imperial. Armory's on-the-spot financing assures fast service. You can buy, sign, and pay at Armory, home of 101 time payment plans. You'll be impressed with the prestige and practicality of owning an Imperial from Armory. Now's the time to save on the big comfort, style, and performance during Imperial Week. Drive into Imperial headquarters this week. Armory Garage, Central at Colvin, in Albany. Now the last of the first inning, and the Mets come up to hit against Don Drysdale. Don Drysdale is not used to taking the mound with many runs to work with. As a matter of fact, in the first seven starts Drysdale made this year, the Dodgers scored a grand total of only 11 runs. In the last time he started and pitched a shutout, the Dodgers scored eight runs. So Big Don undoubtedly appreciates the new trend. Bud Harrelson up against Drysdale, and the fastball is over. Strike one call. Drysdale has the best earned run average in the National League, 1.65. Foul ball hit down the left field line and over into the crowd by Bud Harrelson. Bud hitting 224. Drysdale this year has won three, lost three. In his last three starts, he's won two. No decision in the other. Again, he fits superbly. Way inside, he moved him back. One ball and two strikes. The Dodgers are playing Wes Parker at first. Ron Hunt is at second. 
Gene Michael at short, and Jim LaFever at third. Al Ferrara in left. Willie Davis in center, and Ron Fairley around and right. Roseboro behind the plate. That's the ball high, two and two. Alan Harrelson is hitting left-handed. The Dodgers play the outfield around the left. They have Ferrara playing over close to the left field line, and Willie Davis playing a very shallow left center field. The 2-2 pitch. Check swing, and it's inside ball three. Three and two. Drysdale rarely walks anybody. He's one of the top control pitchers in baseball. Three-two delivery. Swing and a foul tip, but he stays alive. For the Dodgers, they cashed in their opportunity. Scoring four runs on one hit. Doug Estrada could not get his high hard one over. The 3-2 delivery, ground ball driven towards short. Michael Lewis left side comes up throwing in time. One out, nobody on. Eddie Cranesville will be hitting. Eddie batting 337 with three home runs and 13 runs batted in. Eddie had a double, one hit and five at bats in the opening game of the series last night. Ed Charles kneeling on deck. And he bumps the ball down the third baseline, a beautiful bump. The throw won't be in time, it's a base hit. Cranepool caught Jim LaFever back and bunted the ball beautifully for a base hit. And when you're four runs behind and trying to crank up a big inning, it's a marvelous play. Now the hitter is Ed Charles. Ed is hitting 346 after getting four for five in last night's game. Here's the pitch by Drysdale, a strike on the outside corner. Ed Charles raised his batting average 108 points last night. Now Big Don eyes the runner at first. The pitch to Charles, a blooper in the air towards second. Hunt racing over is there and makes the catch. Pop fly, not very high in the air, so Ron had to scoot going toward the right field line to get there. Tommy Davis coming up. Tommy hiked his batting average, 19 points, with three for three last night. And it was the fifth time in 31 ball games that Tommy Davis has had three hits in one game. Tommy enjoyed chatting with his old teammates before the ball game. Drysdale off the stretch delivers to Tommy Davis a strike on the outside corner. Dodgers four and the Mets nothing, bottom half of the first inning. Hit hard, but fair right on the line going down the left field line and into the corner. Tommy Davis on his way to second, and it's a ground rule double. That's got a bad break on that. Crane throw would have scored, but the ball skipped over the short fence down in the corner and went out of play for Al Ferrara. I believe Crane throw would have scored had the ball stayed in play. So Tommy Davis has his ninth two-base hit of the year. Runners on second and third, two men out, and the batter is Jerry Butchek. That was a hard hit line drive by Tommy Davis. Now Drysdale will pitch off the stretch. 
Here's the pitch on the way, and it's over at the letter strike one. Eddie Crane pulled on third, Tommy Davis on second. So in the Dodgers series, Tommy Davis is now four for four. Drysdale this time using the full windup. The pitch, a slow grounder hit down to third. Lefebvre up with it, takes to Parker, and the side is off. And the Mets get two hits but fail to score in their half of the first. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two left on. And at the end of one inning, it's the Los Angeles Dodgers four, and the New York Mets nothing. Ralph? Well, the revised edition of the 1967 Met yearbook is right now available here in Shea Stadium. It's also available to you by mail. In addition to the original players in the first edition, it includes candid pictures of opening day, pictures and playing records of Jerry Buczek, Ed Charles, and Bob Johnson, all newcomers to the Mets. To get your copy by mail, send 65 cents, 50 cents plus 15 cents for handling to Met Yearbook, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. Zip is 11368. That's 65 cents to Met Yearbook, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. Zip 11368. Jack LeMay, but working in relief for New York. We go now to the second inning, and Don Drysdale will be the first batter up. Drysdale, a good hitter. Four hits and 21 times at bat so far this year. Now an 11-year veteran with the Dodgers. And he now has hurled more innings than any man in the history of the Dodgers. He slipped by Dazzy Vance last August. And he started this year with 2,848 innings. Pitched by Jack LeMabe, a breaking ball in the outside corner for a call strike. Drysdale has been a great workman. Pitcher who rarely has been bothered by any injuries or arm trouble, who has taken his turn every four days, year in and year out. Breaking ball over, strike two. The last five straight years, Drysdale has started 40 or more ball games. Now LeMabe winds and pitches. A swing and a miss, he struck him out. Jack LeMabe went off speed to strike out Drysdale. One out of nobody on, now Wes Parker at the top of the order. Parker reached on a walk and later scored in the opening inning. Batting left, he hits a ground ball to short, fielded by Bud Harrelson. The overhand peg is in time to get him by a running stride, two men down. Two outs, nobody on top of the second. It will bring up Ron Hunt. Second baseman, Ron Hunt. Ron Hunt was struck out by Chuck Estrada on a hit-and-run play in the first inning. Good throw by Johnny Sullivan, not quite in time, and Parker slid in with his fifth stolen base. Little things always mean so much in this game of baseball. Had he been out, and it was a very close play, it could have turned the complexion of the game entirely for Chuck Estrada. It then would have been two outs and nobody on. Here's the windup, the pitch by LeMabe, and it's taken inside by Ron. One ball, no strike. (laughs) 
Willie Davis waiting on deck. Walter Alston has Ron Hunt batting second in the order. Off the outside corner, two balls, no strikes. A night game tomorrow night with Jack Fisher pitching against Claude Osteen. The 2-0 delivery. And it's inside and low, ball three, three and 3-0. The Dodgers' stylish left-hander Claude Osteen has already a 1-5 ball game. He's 5-3. And Jack Fisher will be trying to win his fourth game. That should be a good one. 3-0 delivery. Over for a strike, and Ron was taking all away. Now Jack LeMabe works up the ball. Let's have the infield and the outfield straight away against Ron Hunt. 3-1 pitch. And that's a strike on the outside corner, three and two. Pretty good hitters breeze tonight at Shea, particularly for the right-hand batters. It'll fool you. One minute you think it's blowing out, the next minute you think it's blowing in. A high fly ball at the left field. Tommy Davis now coming in, coming in. He's under it. And he makes the catch. That breeze is bringing that ball back now. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. At the end of an inning and a half, it's the Dodgers four and the New York Mets nothing. Now here's a word from Ryan Gold. American one candy tower. Number seven nine three land two two right. Air France zero zero three cliff and leave takeoff. Air Force seven five seven Kennedy Tower. Do you intend to land or go around? When you're in control at Kennedy International, there's a lot riding on what you say. You can't fake it. No, you can't fake anything. It has to be uh you have to know it. You have to get it across to the pilot because he knows that there's other airplanes up there with him. So at a given time of day, you can come look at the radar sometime and you'll see airplanes strung out from 40 miles, 3 miles apart. And it's uh, a ticklish job. Let's be honest, it's ticklish. you got to be good to be on top in New York City. That's true of anything. There are 302 different brands of beer trying to make it in New York. 302. But the only one that's made it to the top is Rheingold. Rheingold. In this town, either you have it or you don't. Number 21. Leon Jones. Leon Jones will be up against Don Drysdale in the last half of the second. Leon had two for four and drove in a run last night. And Wes Rustrum is hoping that that'll be just what Cleon needs to get going. He looks at a breaking ball outside and lowest ball one. Ron Swoboda waiting on deck. And then John Sullivan. Six, seven, and eight in the Mets batting order. Breaking ball in for a strike. One ball, one strike. Drysdale with a good repertoire of pitches and excellent command of them all. The 1-1 delivery. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball. It's one ball and two strikes. Following the Dodgers series, the Atlanta Braves come in for the weekend, and that'll be a four-game set, including a Sunday doubleheader. Friday night, an afternoon game Saturday, and a Sunday afternoon twin bill. One ball, two strikes on Cleon. The pitch by Drysdale. Low outside, it's two and two. Last year was the first year in the last five that Drysdale didn't lead the league in innings pitch. 
the 2-2 delivery. Ground ball hit down to third. Fair ball taken behind the bag by Lefebvre. He guns the peg across in time to get Jones. Good, strong throw by Jim Lefebvre. Batting in the seventh position. Right fielder, number four. Early this year, Jim Lefebvre had four errors in one game at third. His Badger teammates were kidding him and saying him saying to him that he'd be getting fan mail from Dick Stewart. Lefebvre has made the switch from second to third. He had that one bad day, and that's been about it. He's been playing a good third base. Now Ron Swoboda batting. Swing and a miss at strike one. Mail from Dick Stewart. Lefebvre has made the switch from second to third. He had that one bad day, and that's been about it. He's been playing a good third base. Now Ron Swoboda batting, swing and a miss at strike one. After being struck out three times in a row last night, Ron hung in there to get a base hit and drive in a run. Swing and a miss, strike two. Now the two-strike delivery, a swing and a miss, and he struck him out on three pitches. Ron has now struck out nine times in his last 11 official times at bat. He's trying to fight his way out of a slump. They have just announced in the press box that outfielder Johnny Lewis is being recalled from Jacksonville. And that disposition of a player to make room for him on the squad will be announced after the game. Breaking ball inside and low. It's one ball and no strikes. 205 is his average two Sunday. Johnny Lewis had a good spring training. He was hitting the ball solidly. Fly ball hit high in the air to right center by John Sullivan. Coming in is Ron Fairley, and Fairley makes the catch in right field, the side is out. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left. And at the end of two innings to score, the Dodgers four and the New York Mets nothing. Have you heard what's going on at Gulf Service Station? It's Big Tire Day at Gulf. Gulf dealers are now featuring outstanding values on all Gulf tires. Big trade-ins, too. Generous allowances on your old tires. Big selection. A complete range of sizes in the entire Gulf tire line. And remember, when you buy Gulf tires, with a golf travel card. There's no down payment, no carrying charges, and months to pay. Big tire days are going on at golf. Get in on them. the third inning, and Willie Davis comes up for the Dodgers, and coming up to follow the action for you, Ralph Kainer. Thank you, Bob, and hi there, everyone. 4 nothing ball game. The Dodgers lead, getting four runs on one hit in the first inning. Second start of the starting pitcher gave up four walks, and that cost him the four runs. Willie Davis, the batter. Willie walked his first time up, scored a run. Davis batting 286, a left-hand batter, and the first pitch by Jack LeMay, a slow curve foul down in the dirt, strike one. LeMay came in the ballgame in the first inning to pick up Gene Michael for the final out of the inning, and then in the second inning, retired the side in order. He has four in a row. 
He'll be pitching to Willie Davis, Ron Fairley, and Jim LaFever. Willie back in action after being out with a severely sprained ankle. And the one strike delivery. Breaking ball hit down in the dirt again. Strike two. All and two. Last year, Willie Davis got himself in a hitting streak and had eight for eight against San Francisco. He is a man of a thousand stances. Changes his stance quite often. Right now with a closed stance. And he also is hitching, dropping the bat down. He picks it back up, takes outside, it's one and two. Leon Wagner had a good explanation the other day for a slump he was in. Said he had a flaw in his hitch. He came out of that slump against the Yankees with a grand slam home run. Here's the one-two pitch. Popped up on the third base side. It's Ed Charles waiting for it in his normal third base position, and he makes the catch. So Willie Davis is out. That'll bring up Ron Fairley. Ron walked in four pitches his first time up to keep his average at 267, five home runs, and 21 runs better than Fairley, a left-hand batter. And Jack LeMay with a curveball. It's hit down to Eddie Cranepool. He takes it back in the edge of the grass, throws to Jack LeMay, covering the first base for the out. Now with two men out, the batter will be the third baseman, Jim LeFever. Jim saw one pitch his first time up and grounded it out just like Ron Fairley just did. Down to Ed Cranepool at first base with LeMay covering. Only the time that he grounded out his first time up, Chuck Estrada was on the mound. At the end of three, Philadelphia won, San Francisco nothing. And the first pitch is called a ball. In that ball game, Bob Bolin pitching for the Giants against Larry Jackson. At the end of two, Atlanta three, St. Louis nothing. Bryles in place of Carlton for the Cardinals. Blasting game for Atlanta. Now the next pitch. One ball, one strike. A swing and a miss. At the end of one and a half innings, Pittsburgh nothing, Houston nothing. Odell against Durker. On the schedule, Cincinnati at Chicago, but that game has rained out. Now at 1-1, the pitch to Lefevre's inside. Two balls, one strike. At the end of two and a half innings, Baltimore won the Yankees nothing. Stoudemire against Bertana. Boston scheduled against Detroit. At the end of six, Cleveland won Washington nothing. Chicago scheduled against Minnesota. Kansas City against California. Now the 2-1 delivery. It's low, ball three. Three balls, one strike. That Boston-Detroit game being delayed because of rain. 3-1 delivery. LeMay back and the ball is fouled off. So the count evens out at 3-2. and two. Jim LeFever batting 295. He has one home run. 19 runs batted in. When he grounded out the first base, he drove in a run. Now the 3-2 delivery. Curveball swung on and missed. Strike three. Oh, what happened on it? I got it. Ball was a curveball swung on and foul tipped, and John Sullivan picked it out of the dirt, so he did not catch it. Sullivan tried to steal it. He was off on his way to the dugout, but Tom Gorman said, no, sir, you trapped it out of the dirt. So the foul tip goes to the foul tip. You have to catch it on the fly, and the count remains three and two. Curveball was a big breaking curve that bounced down in the dirt. Long on a miss by the fever. Now LeMay back in the fastball outside, ball four. So LeMay walks his first man, and we'll pause now for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. 
Hi, this is Jerry Ducey. Have your late morning coffee with me each weekday morning from 10 to 11.30 here on the big bright sound of WGY Schenectady. Hodgers leading 4 nothing. They scored four runs in the first. Two men away here in the top of the third. And the batter for the Dodgers, John Roseboro. The fever on at first base. Roseboro walks in a 3-2 pitch his first time up. His average staying at 296. And the first pitch is outside, ball one. John with one home run and six runs batted in. Dodgers with one base hit, the Mets have two. Lefever with a big lead draws the throw, but he gets back quickly and easily. No tag made by John, by Eddie Cranepool at first base. <coughs> Alame back, the runner going. The pitch is hit in the air to shallow center field. Leon Jones starts back, now has a long run. The ball is way in the air. He'll have time to get to it. He does, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, a walk a man left on, and the score at the end of two and a half innings, the Dodgers four, the Mets nothing. Armory Garage proudly announces the arrival of its fifth annual Imperial Week. Stop in at the corner of Central and Colvin in Albany and see the full Imperial line. Treat yourself to a test drive and experience the quiet ride, the elegant interiors, and the luxurious extras that are standard equipment on these beauties. Let the Armory salesman show you how you can own an Imperial for far less than you expect. Armory's volume is one reason why they can put you behind the wheel of the newest luxury car in a decade at the lowest possible price. Used car sales are up, and Armory will give you top trade on your present car. Another reason why smart car buyers check Armory first. Learn how you can buy, sign, and pay at Armory, where terms are tailored to suit your budget. Or learn how you can lease a new Imperial at Armory. Isn't it time you experience the luxury, the prestige of a precision-built automobile? Stop in at Armory Garage, Central at Colvin, Albany, during Imperial Week for the best buy on Imperial 67, the newest prestige car in a decade. Number 34, Jack. The Mets half of the third coming your way with the Dodgers in front four to nothing. They got four runs in the first inning against starting pitcher Chuck Estrada. Chuck gave up one hit, a double to Al Ferrara that drove in three runs. He also gave up a run on a force play at first base. Jack LeMabe now batting for the New York Mets. He came in the ball game with two men out the first. He is 0 for 3 this year. On the mound for the Dodgers, Don Drysdale. And the first pitch is a breaking ball outside, ball one. Don has something going for him this year. He has worked 62 innings. He has yet to give up a home run pitch. And the right-hander back again, this time getting a strike with a fast ball. One ball, one strike. Don strikeouts at a total of 42 for the season. Now he comes back, picks up strike two. Fastball over the outside part of the plate. One ball and two strikes. Drysdale with a record of three and three. He leads the National League in earned runs among starting pitchers with a 1.65 ERA. And the one-two delivery. A Mabe swings and misses strike three, and Don gets his second strike out of the ball game. His first out here in the bottom half of the third, and it brings up the leadoff batter, Bud Harrelson. Number three. On a 3-2 pitch, Bud Harrelson grounded down to short. He hit the ball well, but Gene Michael at short made a good play on him. Harrelson batting 221 and batting left-handed against the right-hander. Dodgers four, the Mets nothing. And Drysdale with a fastball that swung on and fouled back against the screen, strike one. Drysdale has started nine ball games. He has not relieved. He has two complete games. And the one-strike delivery, fastball inside and high. 
Bud Harrelson, who stands close to the plate, had to move away. One and one. Mets have two hits. The Dodgers have one. But the Dodgers have all the runs. Pitch back outside. Two balls, one strike. And as Frankie Frisch said, oh, those bases on balls. Dodgers got four in the first. Pitch outside is ball three. Three and one. Mets won last night. Bill Singer was wild, the starting pitcher for the Dodgers. Tom Seaver picked up his fourth win. He has lost two. Mets won at five to two. The three-one pitch. Right two. Three and two. Drysdale has given up 11 base on balls in nine ball games this year. One was intentional. Three balls, two strikes. And the next pitch to Harrelson hit down to short once again. Michael comes up with it, fires the first, and gets him by two steps. Two men away in the bottom half of the third. That brings up Eddie Cranepool, who beat out a bunt his first time up. Ed now is in 15 of his last 16 ball games and his average at 345. Ed with a 13 game consecutive game hitting streak stopped and now he has one going of two. Left hand batter, two men out, bottom half of the third. Dodgers four, Mets nothing, and the first pitch is outside. Drysdale missing with a fastball. Don Drysdale played high school ball as a second baseman. Ball one pitch, a let up, and a good one. It's over, strike one. One and one. Jim Lefevre, the third baseman, is playing even with the bag to guard against the possible repetition of the bunt. One one pitch is grounded over the top of the mound, going out towards second base. Ron Hunt comes up with it. The throw to first base is in time. Just in time as Ron Hunt got it there to West Parker. Slight argument on the play, just a little one by Eddie Cranepool. Also Yogi Bear, but not too serious about it as the call was made. Drysdale with a one, two, three inning and the score at the end of three. The Dodgers four, the Mets nothing. All the Dodgers again tomorrow night. And then after a day off on Thursday, it'll be the Atlanta Braves in here over the weekend. Friday night, Saturday afternoon, Ladies' Day on Saturday afternoon. Ladies admitted for a 50-cent service charge. Then a big doubleheader on Sunday. You can get tickets for all the home games of the Mets at a wide variety of locations. Right here at Shea Stadium, they're open seven days a week, eight to six on weekdays, and nine to five on Saturdays and Sundays. Tickets available at Grand Central Station at the foot of the 42nd Street and Vanderbilt Avenue ramp. Open weekdays from 8 to 6 and Saturdays from 8.30 to 4. Tickets available at Macy's store on 34th Street and 7th Avenue on the main floor and at Macy's in the Walt Whitman Shopping Center in Huntington, Long Island. Both locations open during regular store hours. In addition, reservations for box and reserve seats may be made at all Howard Clothing stores during regular store hours and also at any branch of the manufacturer's handover trust company during banking hours. Tickets also can be obtained by mail by writing ticket manager, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. The zip is 11368. Box seats are 350 each. Reserve seats are 250 each. Be sure to add 25 cents to cover the mailing cost. Top of the fourth inning, the Dodgers lead 4-0. And now Ferrara. The first batter for the Dodgers. He doubled in three his first time up. Right-hand batter. And Jack LeMave on the mound for the Mets. Relieving Chuck Estrada. Misses with his first pitch. It's ball one. Raw getting his eighth, ninth, and tenth runs batted into the season. His base hit knocking Chuck Estrada out of the box. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Fastball swung on and missed. One and one. Chuck is batting 192.
And LeMay back with a curve, a good one. It snaps over and in. It's one and two. Only man to reach against Jack LeMay. Jim LeFever, who walked in a 3 2 pitch. Jack is pitched to eight. He misses high, and the ball is taken. Two balls, two strikes. Mets have announced that they are recalling Johnny Lewis. They'll make a spot for him after tonight's ball game. He was at Jacksonville and was batting 205 through Sunday. 17 hits and 83 times up. And at 2-2, the pitch is taken outside. Three balls, two strikes. When Johnny went down to Jacksonville, it was more of a reason for a sore arm than his batting average. He had a great spring, but he had a bad arm and couldn't throw. He was very disappointed when they sent him out. 3-2 pitch fouled off. The count remains at three balls and two. No one out. It's the top of the fourth inning. The Dodgers in front, 4 nothing. May rubbing the shine off the new ball that was put in play. Now checking out the sign. John Sullivan, the catcher for the Mets. And a 3 2 the pitch. It is it out to center field. Leon Jones moving back. He makes the call, makes the catch. One away in the top of the fourth. It brings up the shortstop, Gene Michael. Sometime during National Tavern Month, Show your favorite bartender how much you appreciate him. Buy him a nice cold Rango. Gene Michael batting left-handed against the right-hander. In the first pitch, a high fastball. One-handed by John Sullivan, ball one. Michael was the first man that Jack LeMay pitched to in the first inning when he came in the ball game. Got him the foul out to retire the side. Michael batting 220. Next pitch is grounded out towards first base. The ball takes a bad hop, but Rainbow goes down with it, comes up with it, goes to the bag for the out. And with two men out, the batter will be Don Drysdale. Don struck out on a curveball his first time up. He has four hits and 22 times up. A 182 batting average. One year for the Dodgers, he led the team in hitting and was used as a pinch hitter. He has 29 Major League home runs. Has none this year. He has driven in two. Swing and a miss. Crazy enough, Drysdale, who has very good power at the plate when he hits the ball, does not hit a golf ball too far. About a 16 handicapper. Pitch back, swung on a miss. He played Spyglass Golf Course up in the Pebble Beach Tournament this winter. It was a brand new course, and it's rated as one of the toughest in the world. And they asked him if it was tough, and he says, it's so tough, why even the driving range is hard. Now the two-strike pitch. High in his ball one. One and two. Two men away, top of the fourth. The Dodgers lead 4 nothing. Jack LeMay with the 1-2 delivery. Curveball swung on a miss, strike three. Second time the Drysdale has been struck out on the curveball. And the second strikeout for Jack LeMay in the ball game. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on base. And the score at the end of three and a half innings, the Dodgers score the Mets nothing. Now here's the word from Rheingold. Look!
and two beers trying to make it in New York. From all over. But only one beer has made it to the top. The rich, dry lager, Rango. In this town, either you have it or you don't. In this town, either you have it or you don't. Either you're a pro or you won't get very far. Either you have it or you don't. Rango. It's the bottom half of the fourth. The Dodgers leading by a score of four to nothing. First man up for the Mets will be Ed Charles. On the mound for the Dodgers, Don Drysdale. He has given up no runs, allowed two hits. And his first pitch to Charles, a curveball over, it's strike one. Don has struck out two, he has walked none. His pitch back to Charles, again the curve, and it's called strike two. Charles popped the second base his first time up. Batting 333, he was four for five last night against the Dodgers. Two strike delivery, fastball, it's outside. Down around the knees, one and two. Dodgers got four runs in the first inning on one hit. And Drysdale back again, and the pitch is thrown on and missed. And on the swing, Ed Charles loses his bat. He goes all the way out to third. Drysdale with his third strikeout, his first out here in the bottom half of the fourth, and the batter now will be Tommy Davis. Tommy doubles right down the left field line his first time up. Tommy now with nine doubles, and he's batting 325. He has had four hits in his last four times up. He also has reached his last five times up. Last night he was hit by a pitch ball. And he picked up three hits to go along. Tommy Davis against Don Drysdale. And Don with a breaking ball, a swing and a miss, strike one. Tommy Davis says he's had trouble so far this year here in Jay Stadium with the batter's box. He doesn't like to stand in a deep hole, and his normal position in the batter's box corresponds with a lot of other hitters who dig a fairly good-sized hole. One strike pitch, it's a fastball over. Strike two. That is not unusual. That's one of the hardest things when you're a hitter to find a good solid hitting position that is not dug out. Two strike delivery. Hit off the end of the bat foul and the count stays at 0-2. Batter's box is made of clay. It's very hard, but some hitters like to dig in real good and dig a deep hole. And if you don't stand in that same hole, you're in trouble. Of course, if you stand in a different place in the batter's box and it's normal, then you don't have that trouble. Drysdale peering in for the sign. He's in disagreement with John Roseboro, which is not usually the case. And he takes too long, and Tommy Davis steps out of the batter's box. Now the pitcher's ready, and the ball is sliced off over in the right field in the air. Waiting there is Ron Fairley, and he makes the catch. Two men out. Drysdale has retired every batter in a row since he gave up the double to Tommy Davis. Now the batter will be Jerry Buczek, the second baseman. Jerry grounded out to third his first time up with runners at second and third. Batting at 250. And the first pitch, a fastball looked at, strike one. Buczek leads the club in home runs with five. Right-hand batter, Drysdale back, a curveball popped up. The shortstop, Gene Michael, is under. And he makes the catch and that retires the side. 
So Drysdale now with 10 in a row and the score at the end of four, the Dodgers four, the Mets nothing. Armory Garage Albany is celebrating its fifth annual Imperial Week with the largest selection ever of new and used Imperials at unbelievably low prices. Armory's Art Neat invites you to test drive any one of the top condition, late model used Imperials that are ready to go. You can choose from two and four door sedans, many equipped with the exclusive Imperial Extras. Trade up now at Armory and receive top dollar for your present car. Chances are it will more than cover the down payment on a mint condition late model Imperial. Armory's on the spot financing assures fast service. You can buy, sign, and pay at Armory, home of 101 time payment plans. You'll be impressed with the prestige and practicality of owning an Imperial from Armory. Now's the time to save on the big comfort, style, and performance during Imperial Week. Drive into Imperial Headquarters this week. Armory Garage, Central at Colvin, in Albany. Helio, Chacon, Jay Hook, Don Zimmer, and an old-timer named Ed Cranepool. It'll be a lot of fun, no doubt about it. The date again is July the 8th, a Saturday night battle between the New York Mets and the Atlanta Braves. Wes Parker leading off against Jack LeMabe as we move now into the fifth inning. He takes the pitch outside, ball one. Parker hitting for the third time. He reached on a walk and later scored in the opening inning. And he bounced out the short in the second. Check swing and a foul ball over into the Dodger dugout. One ball, one strike. One ball, one strike on Wes Parker, Ron Hunt on deck, and then Willie Davis. Now here's the windup, the 1-1 delivery. Foul ball, whacked back upstairs, no play. It's one ball and two strikes. Parker hitting 248. Now the one-two delivery to West Parker he is inside and low in the count is two and two. Jim Gilliam coaching at first, Preston Gomez coaching at third. For the Dodgers, the on-deck batter is Ron Hunt, then Willie Davis. Now the two-two delivery by LeMabe. And the curve is inside and low, ball three. And we have a full count of three and two. Wind blowing in from center field toward home. Wind can be quite confusing in the big concrete horseshoe stadium. The winds will get inside the horseshoe and kind of swirl around. A swing and a miss. He struck him out. And Parker is fanned by Jack LeMay for Jack his third strikeout. Now Ron Hunt coming up. Ron has been struck out and fly to left field. In the first inning, after Parker reached on a walk, with a count of one and two, the Dodgers played hit and run. Estrada threw a beautiful slow curve, and he struck out Hunt. Sullivan pegged the second. On a close play, Parker was safe with a stolen base. Had he been out, and the play was very close, it could have turned things around for Estrada. Taking a high ball one. Chuck just could not get control of his high hard one tonight. And after walking four men, he had to come to the hitter. It made one too good, and Al Ferrara doubled with the bases loaded, driving three runs in. And the pitch is over for a strike, one ball, one strike. A 
Ron Hunt batting 259 with 11 runs batted in. Hit in the air to short right center field. It may drop in for a hit going out of boot check. He gets the glove on it, can't hold it. Now the throw to second base, not in time, and Hunt goes into second. Ron Swoboda pumped the throw to second base and held on to it. Then when he did throw, it was too late, and Hunt slides into second with a double. A Texas League double into shallow right center field. Quite an effort on the part of Jerry Buchuk. He left his feet at the last moment, went ninthing through the air, and with a backhand stab, managed to get a glove on it. But he was way out of position to try and hold on to it. It bounced off his glove, and Hunt goes into second. That is the first base hit off Jack LeMay in relief and only the second Dodger hit. It's down on the dirt to Willie Davis. One ball and no strikes. Now Willie Davis wants the ball looked over by umpire Tom Gorman. Willie has reached on a walk and been retired on a pop fly to third. Nothing for what? The Dodgers lead 4-0. They scored four in the first inning. Ron Hunt on second base. One man away here on the top half of the fifth inning. Bud Harrelson shaded towards second against Willie Davis. Willie standing well back from the plate, an overly close stance. And he ignores the pitch to slow 2-0. Two balls and no strikes on Willie Davis. Ron Fairley on deck and then Jim LaFevre. The 2-0 delivery. Swing and a miss. It's two balls and a strike. He went after a breaking ball down around the knees. Back in the first when the Dodgers scored, therefore, Jim LaFevre drove in the first when he grounded out. And Ferrara drove in three when he doubled with the bases jam. The 2-1 pitch. A strike on the outside corner, two and two. It's cool enough tonight. Throw that out on the Mets bullpen. They use the barbecue grill to keep the charcoal burning for the pitchers to stand around and keep their hands warm. Lindsay says we need one right here. Pretty good idea. Now the 2-2 pitch. And it's golf in the air down the right field line. Galloping hard is Swoboda. He's getting there, and he makes the catch. Tagged and on his way to third. is hot. The throw coming in, not in time. And Hunt goes to third after the catch. Ron Hunt moving over to third, two men away, and Ron Fairley is coming up. Fairley has reached on a walk and scored a run and bounced out. Eddie Crane pulled to the pitcher covering. Johnny Sullivan out now to talk to Jack LeMay. Alamabe winds and pitches to Ron Fairley, and it's under the knees. One ball, no strike. Third baseman Jim Lefebvre is the on-deck batter. The Dodgers have four runs, two hits, no errors. The New York Mets, no runs, two hits, no errors. Babe taking his time now to work that new ball around on his hands. Ron Hunt on third base, two men down. Down comes the pitch to Fairley. Inside, it bounds away from Sullivan. Here's Hunt trying to score, and he's safe. The 
throw to LeMay covering at the plate was in time, but it popped out of his glove. And Hunt comes in to score. LeMay was in a tough spot. He had his back to the base runner as he faced Sullivan, who was in foul territory. He tried to glance out of the corner of his eye to see where Hunt was, and just as he did, the ball in his glove and bounced out. Run scores on a wild pitch. And the Dodgers lead five to nothing. First run off Jack LeMay. And it's two balls and no strikes on Ron Fairley. That ball did not roll very far from the plate. The Mets had a great chance to nail Hunt at home. But as we mentioned, LeMay glanced back to get the position on the runner, Ron Hunt. Took his eye off the ball and it popped out of his glove. Taking a high, ball three, three and oh. Pitcher is always in a tough spot trying to cover a home plate on a pass ball or a wild pitch. 3 0 delivery right in there for a strength three and one. Ron Fairley leading the Dodgers in home runs and in runs batted in. He hit his fifth home run of the year last night. And a call strike on the inside corner, three and two. Now Jack LeMay with a string out, three and two on Fairley. Triggers the three-two delivery. A fly ball hit the right center, it's well hit. Leon Jones moving back near the warning track makes the catch. Side out at the top of the fifth inning. One run, one hit, a Texas League double to right center by Hunt. He moved the third on a fly to right and scored on a wild pitch. One run, one hit, no errors, none left. At the end of four and a half, the Dodgers five and the New York Mets nothing. Omri Garage Albany is celebrating its fifth annual Imperial Week with the largest selection ever of new and used Imperials at unbelievably low prices. Armory's Art Neat invites you to test drive any one of the top condition, late model used Imperials that are ready to go. You can choose from two and four door sedans, many equipped with the exclusive Imperial Extras. Trade up now at Armory and receive top dollar for your present car. Chances are it will more than cover the down payment on a mint condition, late model Imperial. Armory's on the spot financing assures fast service. You can buy, sign, and pay at Armory home of 101 time payment plans. You'll be impressed with the prestige and practicality of owning an Imperial from Armory. Now's the time to save on the big comfort, style, and performance during Imperial Week. Drive into Imperial Headquarters this week. Armory Garage, Central at Colvin, in Albany. Last of the fifth inning, and Leon Jones will lead off against Don Drysdale. Drysdale gave up two hits in the first inning, has hurled hitless ball since then, and the fastball has taken high, ball one. Tomorrow night, Claude Osteen, five and three of the year, going against the Mets' Jack Fisher. Jack will be trying for his fourth win. Now the pitch on the way. This is over. Leon bluffed at a bunt, and that brought Jim Lefebvre dashing in from third. One ball, one strike. Yogi Berra coaching at first. Salty Lee Parker coaching at third. The 1-1 delivery by Drysdale. A pop fly into short left center. Out goes Michael, the shortstop, and he's got it. One out and nobody on. Now Ron Swoboda coming up. 
Don Drysdale pitched the shutout his last time out against Chicago, and for Drysdale, it was his 38th career shutout. Drysdale has more shutouts than any active National League pitcher. Only two less than his famous teammate, Sandy Koufax, who retired at the end of last year. Drysdale loves the pitch. He is big and strong, and he should be around for quite a while yet. A high twisting pop foul over toward the field box crowd, and no play for Jim LaFever, the third baseman. Drysdale is still a young man, even though he has been around 11 years. Johnny Sullivan is waiting on deck. Here's the pitcher on the way, and Ron checks up on a breaking ball outside. One ball, one strike. It could be about 15 below zero. It wouldn't make any difference at all to Jack Hamilton. Foul ball back in the crowd, no play. Regardless of how chilly the night may be, dry, uh, Jack Hamilton always wears the sweatshirt with the cutout sleeves. He likes the freedom, so he cuts the sleeves off right at the shoulders. Now a check swing, ball two, it's two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Hamilton always wears the sweatshirt with a cutout sleeve. He likes the freedom, so he cuts the sleeves off right at the shoulders. Now a check swing, ball two, it's two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Now Drysdale checking with Roseboro. The outfield around the left. A high fly, well hit to left field. Back goes Willie Davis on the warning track. He's got to play, and he makes the catch. The wind is holding balls up, being hit to left center and center field of that. And Willie Davis took that one on the warning track. Two outs, nobody on. And here a quick pause for a station break. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is Bill Edwardson. Make a late afternoon music day to join me weekday afternoons, 3 to 6 p.m. on the Big Bright Sound. Here on WGY, Schenectady. The Dodgers lead the New York Mets 5 to nothing. We're in the last of the fifth inning. And the pitch to Johnny Sullivan is low ball one. Jack LeMay at the on-deck batter. Now Big Don delivers. And the breaking ball is taken. A ball two. It's two and zero. Two zero delivery. Under the knees. A ball three. Three and zero. Last year, Drysdale was fourth in the National League in control. For the entire season, he averaged only about one and a half walks per nine innings. And the pitch is over for a strike three and one. The actual breakdown on the figure was something like 1.48, or a little less than one and a half walks per nine innings. Inside ball four, and there's the first walk in the game by Drysdale. Now Jack LeMabe is being called back. Jack Hamilton is warming up in the bullpen, and we're going to get a pinch hitter. Jack LeMabe turned in a very strong relief spin. Jack came in in the opening inning and pitched four and one-third. 
Al Luplo is coming out of the dugout to bat for Jack LeMabe. The run scored off LeMabe in the fifth inning was of the scratch variety, and it was the only run Jack gave up. He allowed only one hit, and it was a Texas League double by Ron Hunt. LeMabe walked one and struck out three. Jack Hamilton will come in the ball game in the sixth inning. Al Luplo batting for Jack LeMay. Al batting 208. Mets trying to make a move to get back in this ball game. They trail the Dodgers five to nothing. Each team has just two hits, but the Dodgers were the opportunists. They took advantage of four walks to score four runs in the first. Here's the pitch on the way, and Luke Lowe lets it go. One ball and no strike. Now the six-foot-six-inch right-hander, Don Drysdale, holds the runner on. Down comes his pitch to Luplo, and it's on the outside corner, a strike. One ball, one strike. Bud Harrelson kneeling on deck. The outfield around to right. The 1-1 pitch is swinging a miss on a high-breaking ball. One ball and two strikes. Now Drysdale up in pitching position. Delivers a shot foul hit down the right field line by Luplo. Karam's now out into right field. So Ron Fairley comes over to pick it up and throw it back to the ball boy. One and two on Al Luplo. One two delivery. It's down on the dirt, handled nicely by Johnny Roseboro. Two balls, two strikes. Johnny Roseboro, 10 year veteran behind the plate. This is really a veteran battery working for the Dodgers tonight. Drysdale, whose career has spanned 11 years in the Dodger uniform on the mound, and Roseboro behind the plate. A lot of baseball know how. The 2-2 delivery, a little squibbler going foul, coming back toward the backstop, and the count stays 2-2. Two and two. Now Luplo gets out of the batter's box for a moment. Dodger infield swung around to right. Ron Hunt playing a couple of steps into right field against Al Luplo. And Michael is playing almost over behind second base. The outfield shaded around to right. Drysdale now with a two and two count on Al Luplo. Down comes the pitch. Whack foul, a right straight back into the screen. And again, the count remains two and two. Now Jack Hamilton has completed his warm-ups out in the bullpen. Put on a jacket and gone over by the barbecue grill to warm his hands. Drysdale, two and two to the hitter. The pitch to Luplo and a curve is fouled back into the crowd as Luplo continues his battle against Drysdale.
Two balls, two strikes. Now Big Don up in the set position. His 2-2 pitch is fouled again, and this time it came down and hit Luplo on the foot. And then bounced over into the Dodger dugout. Drysdale now turning his back to the plate to catch his breath for a moment and work up the new ball. Don is three and three this year. The first seven games he started, the Dodgers scored a total of just 11 runs. And it's hard to win when your teammates don't score. The 2 2 pitch. A line drive base hit to the opposite field. Moving down to second and holding there is Johnny Sullivan. And now the Mets have runners on first and second. Two men out and Bud Harrelson coming up. Well, Al Luplo won the individual duel. He had quite a duel there with Don Drysdale. He fouled off five or six and then got his base hit. Bud Harrelson has been up twice and both times grounded out to short. Single to left by Luplo, the third hit for the New York Mets. One more than the Dodger collection. Now the pitch on the way, inside the butt ball one. One ball and no strike. Jim Lefebvre playing close to the bag at third, in front of it by about two steps. A little bit high on Harrelson, ball two, two and oh. Now Johnny Roseboro showing some concern, walked slowly toward the mound. Drysdale retired the first two batters here in the last of the fifth inning. He walked John Sullivan for his first walk. And Al Luplo battled him for a base hit to left field. Bud Harrelson batting 218. Bud as a left-hand hitter uses a wide open stance and chokes up on the bat. High ball three. Eddie Cranepool is waiting on deck. Pitching three and zero, oh. it's in for a strike three and one. Harrelson was taking all the way, and now checks with Salty Parker to see if he's to take on the three and one pitch. Now the set by Drysdale and the pitch. Ball four, the bases are loaded. Eddie Cranebull coming up with the bases loaded. Two men down. Eddie has one hit in two times at bat. He punted for a base hit in the first inning. So he has one of the three hits off drive still. Now the crowd much alive here at Shea as the Mets get the bases loaded against Don Drysdale. It's Charles, the on-deck batter, and then Tommy Davis. Now Drysdale getting his sign from Johnny Roseboro. Sullivan is the lead runner on third. Luke Lowe on second. Bud Harrelson is on first. Here's the windup by Drysdale. Now the pitch. Inside and low, ball one. Paid crowd tonight, 32,021, a marvelous turnout on a rather chilly night, and a total crowd of just under 33,000. And this is the big moment for the crowd here at Shea. The Mets have the bases loaded. Two men out, one ball and no strikes to Ed Greenpool. Drysdale eyes the runner at third. Now the pitch on the way, and it's a fly ball at the center field. 
Willie Davis scooting in has his eye on it, and he makes the catch the side is up. Rainpool flies to center, retiring the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, three left on. And at the end of five, it's the Dodgers five and the New York Mets nothing. This is Sandy Koufax. In baseball locker rooms, the talk is often about sore arms, torn cartilages, and bad backs. These are serious to a ball player. Tough, of course. But it's nothing compared to what could happen and does happen and has happened to so many of our fellow Americans in all walks of life. I mean MS, multiple sclerosis, the great crippler of young adults. There isn't one MS victim that wouldn't be happy to settle for a sore arm or a torn cartilage. MS is the disease of the central nervous system. It blocks or scrambles nerve messages directing movement, speech, vision, and balance. It can happen to any of us usually between the ages of 20 and 40. There is no cure yet, but there is hope for a cure through research. Your contribution can help discover that cure. This is Sandy Koufax asking that you join with me in giving generously when the MS volunteer calls. Thank you. Mess, Jack Hamilton is in the ball game to pitch. Pinch hitter Al Luplo, who delivered a single to left, stays in the ball game. Al goes to center field. Leon Jones moves to right, and Ron Sloboda comes up. Outstanding relief job turned in by Jack LeMabe here this evening. Jack, in four and a third, gave up just one scratch run, one scratch hit. He walked one and struck out three. Now Jack Hamilton takes over. Jim Lefebvre, the third baseman, will be the first man up against Jack Hamilton. Jack has won none and lost none. He has made eight relief appearances, and he started one ball game. That was against the Cardinals. In that ball game, Hamilton hit a grand slam home run off Al Jackson, but came back wild in the next inning and eventually left the game after pitching three innings. That was the game the Cardinals finally won, 11 to 9. Jim Fever, the batter, and the pitch by Hamilton is down the middle. Strike one call. Now the pitch on the way. Inside and low, one ball, one strike. Jim Lefebvre has grounded out to Eddie Crane Pool and reached on a walk, nothing for one. Lefebvre is hitting 295. Next pitch, a grounder bounced right at Jerry Bootcheck. It comes up on a shoulder high hop. And he throws the Crane Pool one down. One out and nobody on. Now Johnny Rose Pearl. Roseboro has reached on a walk and scored a run and flied to center, nothing for one. Roseboro hitting 292. He runs up as if to bunt and doesn't offer, and the pitch goes outside, one ball and no strike. 32,021 was paid for the crowd tonight. Final game of the series here tomorrow night at 8 p.m. with Claudio Steen hurling for the Dodgers, Jack Fisher for the Mets. A fly ball well hit the center. Scooting back is Luplo. Now nearing the warning track. He's under it, and he has it. Boy, the wind is holding things up into the outfield tonight. You'd really have to clobber one to get it out of here. Probably would take more of a line drive type home run. Al Ferrara is the batter. He has the big blow in the game. He doubled the left center in the opening inning with a basis loaded to drive three runs in. Inside and low, ball one to Al Ferrara. His second time up, he skied deep to center field.
Now the 1-0 delivery. And as the grounder slowly hit off them out as Hamilton, it takes a crazy hop. No play. Charles picks the ball up. It's a base hit for Ferrara. The way that ball was bouncing, I was sure it came off of his Good foot. Job. But apparently not. Michael. And just as Hamilton thought he was going to pick the ball up, it took the wildest bounce you've ever seen. Turned 90 degrees away from him. By the time Charles could pick it up, no point even bothering to throw. An infield hit for Al Ferrara. Gene Michael, the shortstop, is fouled out and bounced out. Nothing for two. Batting left. And the pitch outside, ball one. We're in the sixth inning. Dodgers five and the Mets nothing. Each team has had three hits. Throw to first by Hamilton. Scooting back is Al Ferrara. Now Hamilton nods in agreement with Johnny Sullivan. And a pitch out, nothing was on. Two balls, no strike. Gene Michael hitting 218 has five RBIs. Played shortstop with Columbus last year and hit 289. Bob Bailey and Gene Michael came to the Dodgers for Maury Wills. And a throw to first, and Ferrara is back. Now the pitch by Hamilton. Slow bouncing ball back to the mound, taken by Hamilton. He throws to Cranesville, and the side is off. In the top of the sixth inning, no runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. And at the end of five and a half, the Los Angeles Dodgers five and the New York Mets nothing. Now here's a word from Rheingold. That's Eddie Beal, captain of the New York Fire Department. What brought him here? I remember uh, Eddie used to shine shoes uh, right here in this corner. And uh, he really hustled. Didn't think he'd ever be a fireman, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one was taken right after we were married. You see, he was a rookie then, and I was so proud of him then. <laughs> he saved my life. He saved me, my and my wife and my life. He pulled us both out of a fire. He's really a good fireman. You've got to be good to make it in New York. You can't fake it. That's true of anything. There are 302 different brands of beer trying to make it in this town today. But the only one that's made it to the top is Rheingold. Rheingold. In this town, either you have it or you don't. Third baseman, Ed Charles. Ed Charles leading off in the last of the sixth inning, and the pitch is fouled off strike one. Ground ball hit hard to shortstop, and the ball is put by Hal, uh, Michael, the throw to first, though. It's in time for the out. Michael recovering just in time. One out of nobody on. Michael recovering in time to toss out Ed Charles, and it brings up Tommy Davis. Tommy has doubled to left, his ninth double of the year, and fly to right. Drysdale out of his windup. Now the pitch. And Tommy Davis holds up the slider is outside. Ball one. (laughs) 
Next pitch on the way. A smash to short, a one-hopper snagged by Michael. The long peg across to Parker is in time, and Tommy Davis is out. Two down. Two outs, nobody on. Jerry Buczek coming up. Jerry has bounced to third and popped to short, nothing for two. Drysdale swings out of his windup, and the pitch to boot check a curve on the outside corner, strike one. Drysdale has walked two, struck out three. Allowed no runs, given up three hits. Foul ball off the end of the bat, back into the crowd. Two strike count. Two strike delivery. And Jerry held up in time. He was fooled by Drysdale's motion, but he checked the swing. One ball and two strikes. The Dodgers got four in the first, one more in the fifth. They lead five nothing. We're in the last half of the sixth. The one two pitch. A pop-up outside first and foul ground. Parker moves over near the crowd, reaches into the crowd trying to make the play, but he can't get it. Parker went right over the rail trying to go into the crowd to get that one. Now West gets a hand. The ball came back out of the crowd onto the field. He picked it up, and as he walked back towards the field, just kind of backhanded the ball back into the crowd so they got their souvenir. It was as it should have been because that ball was in the crowd. One ball, two strikes. And the pitch to Buczek, way inside, brushing him away from the plate. Two balls and two strikes. Jerry 0 for 2 tonight. Batting average is now 247. Jerry's bat has cooled off a little bit. The 2-2 delivery, foul ball back over the screen and into the crowd. Baseball has always been a game of streaks for pitchers and hitters alike. Don Drysdale, 2-2 two two on Jerry Buczek. The 2-2 delivery, way outside. That one goes all the way to the backstop, but there's no harm to it, nobody on. It runs the count full now on Jerry Buczek, the 3-2. and two. Willie Davis swinging way over into left center now against Buczek. Al Ferrara playing over toward the left field line. Giants lead the Phillies, 3-2 in the sixth. Braves lead the Cardinals 5-3 in the third. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Drysdale with a breaking ball fans Jerry Buczek. For Drysdale, his fourth strikeout. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left. And at the end of six, the score, the Dodgers five and the Mets nothing. <laughs> Have you heard what's going on at Gulf Service Stations? It's Big Tire Days at Gulf. Gulf dealers are now featuring outstanding values on the big tires, the Gulf Deluxe Crown. The Gulf Deluxe Crown is big in safety, big in mileage, big in value. You'll find big values on other golf tires, too, during Big Tire Days. And remember, when you buy golf tires with a golf travel card, there's no down payment, no carrying charges, and months to pay. Big Tire Days are going on at golf. 
Get in on them. In the seventh inning, Don Drysdale is up to lead off for the Dodgers, Jack Hamilton. With a pitch, and it is low for a ball. Drysdale has been up twice, struck out twice. Chuck Estrada started and is the pitcher of record. The 1-0 delivery, and it is an on-the-ground foul back at third. Tonight's baseball quiz, can you name the only two active National League pitchers who have compiled more National League shutouts than Cy Young, who racked up 34 during his 12 seasons in the National League. Give me the answer in a moment. Wes Parker's waiting on deck. Here's a pitch, swung on it, on the ground up the middle. Big hop to Harrelson. He guns it across now in time. Harrelson took it just at the bag at second. Made the play on the first in time to get Drysdale. One away, and Wes Parker is the batter. He's a switch hitter who has walked, grounded out short to first and struck out swinging. Parker, number 20. Mets and the Dodgers here tomorrow night to conclude the three-game set between the two teams. Jack Hamlin taking a sign from Johnny Sullivan. Heels the pitch, and it's hit on the ground to deep short. Second by Harrelson, thrown on to first. Not in time to get Parker, who beat it out. Wes Parker used his speed to get down the line. He's on it first. We step out for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. The tempo is right. The sound is bright on the Leon Kelly Show weekday, 635 until midnight on the big bright sound of WGY Schenectady. This is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kanter here at Shea Stadium. And the official scorer has ruled error on the last play charged against Harrelson. He went over, scooped it up. May have made a little grab in getting a hold of it uh, the second time in the glove and then threw on and not in time to get Parker. So the official scorer has charged him with an error. First pitch to Ron Hutt now is low for a ball. The Dodgers have a base runner at first with one man out. Hunt struck out swinging, fly to left. Had a double and later scored. Little Texas League double in the fifth inning for Hunt. Now pitch out, nothing on. Ron Taylor is up and throwing in the Met bullpen. Willie Davis has moved to the on-deck circle. Mets have their defense shaded toward right, playing... Ron Hunt to punch the ball to the opposite field. There's a swing and a foul ball to the right side and out of play. Two one count to Ron Hunt. Chuck Estrada pitched the first two thirds of an inning tonight. Was charged with four runs on one hit. He struck out one. He walked four. That was his undoing. The one hit was a double by Al Ferrara that cleared the bases. Here's a 2-1 pitch to the runner going it on the ground. Foul. Out of play. And out of Sun Parker back to first. And the count goes 2-2 now to Ron Hunt. New York Mets have announced tonight that they have recalled Johnny Lewis from Jacksonville. And... A decision will be made at the conclusion of the ball game as to which Met will be cut in order to get down to the squad limit and make room for Johnny Lewis. Wes Parker, the runner at first with one away. Crane Booth holding against him there. 
He takes the lead. He has excellent speed. 2-2 pitches high. And the count goes full at 3-2 now to Hunt. Parker on the back at first. Reading the sign of Preston Gomez. The sign man across the diamond from him at third base. Well, you'd have to guess that manager Walter Austin leading by a score of 5 nothing would have Parker moving on the pitch. One away. Count of 3-2 and two to Ron Hunt. Parker takes his lead, and there he goes. Here's a swing and a foul ball, back and out of play. So the count holds full at 3-2. Dodge just got four in the first and one in the fifth. The lead here by a score of 5 to nothing. Hamlin again sets, checks the runner at first. There he goes. Here's the pitch that's low, and Hunt draws a walk. So there's no play on Parker. He arrives safely at second. Hunt with a walk goes to first. Gives the Dodgers runners first and second. One away, and Willie Davis, the left-hand batter, with good speed, is coming up. Davis walks, pops out to third, and fly out to right field. Missed a good part of the early season with a bad ankle sprain. During his absence, Jim Hickman was playing a lot of center field for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now Hamilton's pitch is swung on and missed with strike one. The Dodgers currently, of course, are playing without the services of Lou Johnson, who is on the injury list. So their outfield is Al Ferraro, Willie Davis, and Ron Fairley. Wes Parker was used in the outfield quite a bit in the early season also. This is a strike one delivery to Willie Davis. A little high, a little tight. Cross the letters, and it's one and one. Ron Fairley has moved out on deck. Hamlin set, deals one one. Misses low and away, so he goes behind two and one now to Willie Davis. Who bats number three in manager Walter Austin's Dodger batting order? Jack LeMay, in relief of net starter Chuck Estrada tonight, worked four and a third inning. Gave up one run on only one hit. He struck out three and walked one. An impressive stint for Jack LeMay before he was removed for a pinch hitter. Swing and a drive into left field, and it's in for a base hit. Tommy Davis over. He bobbles it momentarily. One run is coming home. Parker crosses the plate. Hunt holds it third, and Willie Davis is on his first with a single to left. Right fielder. So Willie Davis gets the run batted in. Parker scoring. Hunt holds it third. The Dodgers lead 6 nothing. Ron Fairley, the cleanup man in the batting order, is coming up with Dodgers at first and third and one man out. Avalon checks runners and deals a pitch a curveball low and inside to Fairley. Ron Taylor is up and throwing in the bullpen again for the Mets. Recently restored to the active list. Pitches in for a call strike. He had been on the disabled list with a back ailment which responded to treatment so he is back and ready to pitch barely steps out of the batter's box for a moment now settles himself back in Hunt at third Willie Davis at first the 1-1 one -one delivery Misses high, so Hamilton goes behind two and one. Jim Lefevre is waiting on deck. This will be a two-one delivery. 
Hit on the ground toward the hole in the right. It goes through for a base hit. Hunt scores. Willie Davis on his way to third. Leon Jones now returns the ball to the infield, holding it first is fairly with a ground single to the right and the run batted in. And the Dodgers lead by a score of seven to nothing. Runners at first and third. One man out. Jim Lefevre is coming up. Lefevre grounded out in the first inning to drive in the first round of the ball game. He walked in the third, grounded out second to first in the sixth inning. Dodgers have their seven runs on five hits. Two of them in this inning. Bringing a ground ball back to the box, second by Harrelson. Steps on the back at second for one throw to first to double play. So the side is out. As the Dodgers pick up two runs on two hits, there was one mid error and one Dodger left. And the score in the middle of the seventh is Dodgers seven, the Met nothing. Armory Garage proudly announces the arrival of its fifth annual Imperial Week. Stop in at the corner of Central and Colvin in Albany and see the full Imperial line. Treat yourself to a test drive and experience the quiet ride, the elegant interiors, and the luxurious extras that are standard equipment on these beauties. Let the Armory salesman show you how you can own an Imperial for far less than you expect. Armory's volume is one reason why they can put you behind the wheel of the newest luxury car in a decade at the lowest possible price. Used car sales are up, and Armory will give you top trade on your present car. Another reason why smart car buyers check Armory first. Learn how you can buy, sign, and pay at Armory, where terms are tailored to suit your budget. Or learn how you can lease a new Imperial at Armory. Isn't it time you experience the luxury, the prestige, of a precision-built automobile? Stop in at Armory Garage, Central at Colvin, Albany, during Imperial Week for the best buy on Imperial 67, the newest prestige car in a decade. And the bottom half of the seventh inning, Cleon Jones is coming up to lead off for the Mets. He has grounded out and popped out so far. Big Don Drysdale on the mound for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Takes the sign, deals a pitch. In there for a call strike to the right-hand batter. Drysdale is the stalwart of the staff. There's a swing and a ground ball to second, taken by Ron Hunt. Plays on the first in time, one away. And now Tommy Reynolds is going to bat for Jack Hamilton. Tommy Reynolds coming out to bat for Jack Hamilton. Reynolds is a right-hand batter. Hitting 233 with one home run and two runs batted in. Shortstop Gene Michael comes in to have a word with Don Drysdale as Reynolds steps into the batter's box. Hamilton worked two innings, allowed two runs on three hits, struck out none and walked one. Here is the pitch to Reynolds, high for a ball. John Sullivan waits on deck. There's one man out, and the Mets are batting in the bottom half of the seventh inning. At the end of this half inning, we'll bring you up to date on all the scores of other games around the majors. Here's the pitch low, it's 2-0. That pitch is in for a strike. It's two and one. Two one delivery. Get on the ground towards short. Michaels over, scooped it up, side armed it to first, low, and Parker can't hang on. Reynolds is on at first. It was not a short hop. It was a hop out in front of Parker. He tried to gather it up with a 
sweeping motion of the glove, held it just a moment, and then it fell to his feet. So it is an error charged against Gene Michael on the throw. It puts Reynolds on at first with one away, and John Sullivan's up. The Dodgers lead seven to nothing. Sullivan has fired the right and walk so far. Al Luplo moves out to the on-deck circle. Luplo is batting number nine in the Met batting order. Rysdale checks the runner, deals pitch high and away for a ball. Now throw it on to first, but Reynolds was standing on the bag as Roseborough just stood up and flipped that ball down toward Parker, who was well behind the bag at first base. Here's a 1-0 pitch, fouled off to the left side, out of play. And it's 1-1. One and one. A paid crowd of 32,021 here tonight for the second game in the three-game set between the Dodgers and Mets. And the third and concluding game of this series will be played tomorrow night. Then the Atlanta Braves are in here Friday night, Saturday afternoon, which is Ladies' Day, and a big Sunday doubleheader. The 1-1 pitch is lined in the center field for a base hit. Reynolds goes to second, holds there as Willie Davis comes up with the ball, and Sullivan is on with a base hit. Now Al Luplo comes up with runners at first and second. That was the fourth hit for the Mets off Don Drysdale. The Dodgers have five off the combined Mets pitching effort for the night. Luplo is a left-hand batter who appeared as a pinch hitter in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Batting for LeMave, and he singled to left field. Left-hand batter facing right-hand pitcher Don Drysdale. That runners lead first and second. The pitcher hit on the ground to first, taken by Parker. He goes to Michael for the force, and the throwback to first is not in time. Taken there by Drysdale, down on his knees. So, the race on the play is John Sullivan, as Reynolds went to third. The scoring, it goes 3-6. Three, Luplo on at first, having forced. First taken by Parker. He goes to Michael for the force, and the throwback to first is not in time. Taken there by Drysdale, down on his knees. So, the race on the play is John Sullivan, as Reynolds went to third. The scoring, it goes 3-6. Three, Luplo on at first, having forced John Sullivan. Now Bud Harrell from the shortstop's coming up. Grounded out short to first. Grounded out short to first and walk. He's a switch hitter batting left. Runners leading first and third for the Mets. Drysdale's pitch is inside as Harrelson had shortened up as though to drag the ball or dump it. And he had to lurch back out of the way, so it is ball one. There are two men out. Drysdale set. The 1-0 pitch. Hit down the line and left if it stays fair. However, Ferrara is there and makes the catch in fair territory. Al Ferrara making the catch. No runs are hitting an error two left. The end of seven full innings. The Dodgers seven. Mets nutty. Now scores of other games. First in the National League. Cincinnati Reds were scheduled against the Cubs in Chicago this afternoon. That game postponed because of rain. At Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia tonight at the end of seven innings of play. The San Francisco Giants four and the Philadelphia Phillies two. Bob Bolin all the way for San Francisco. Larry Jackson started for the Bills. Grant Jackson in the seventh and Dick Farrell in the eighth inning. Tony Taylor and Ollie Brown about home run. At the end of four and a half innings, the Atlanta Braves, nine, and the St. Louis Cardinals, four. Steve Carlton started for the Cards, Nelson Browns in the second, Hal Woodyshick in the fourth, 
Wade Blassingham for Atlanta, Pat Jarvis in the third, and Jay Ritchie in the fourth. Gene Oliver Homer in the second with nobody on. The end of five and a half innings. The Houston Astros eight and the Pittsburgh Pirates two. Billy O'Dell for the Pirates, Vernon Law in the fifth, Steve Blass in the sixth, Larry Durker all the way for Houston. The American League all night action at the end of eight. Baltimore won, the New York Yankees nothing. Stottlemyre started for the Yanks, Womack in the eighth, Britannia for Baltimore, Watt in the sixth. The end of three and a half, the Red Sox won, the Tigers won, Dennis Bennett against Mickey Lolich, Petroselli home in the second with nobody on for the Red Sox. The Cleveland Indians defeated the Washington Senators four to one. Steve Bailey got the win in relief of Gary Bell. Pete Rickards started for Washington. Ball went in the eighth, pretty in the ninth. Larry Bound, Cap Peterson, and Rocky Calavito had home runs. Your attention, please. At the end of three and a half, the Minnesota Twins three and the Chicago White Sox one. Johnny Bazaar to Chicago, Mudcat Grant for Minnesota, Cesar Tovar, Harmon Killebrew, and Pete Ward have had the home run. And the city beats the California, uh, Kansas City meets the California Angels in a later start. Now here's a final score. The Baltimore Orioles have defeated the New York Yankees by a score of one to nothing. Final totals in that game, Baltimore, one run, five hits, no errors. The Yankees, no runs, four hits, no errors. Britannia all the way to get the win. Stottlemyre started and took the loss. Ron Taylor comes in to do the pitching now for the Mets. His first appearance since April 17th. Right-hander recently returned to the active list after having been on the disabled list with a back ailment. Hamilton pitched two innings, gave up two runs on three hits, struck out none, walked one, and John Roseburg is up to lead off for the Dodgers who are out front 7-0. Tommy Reynolds stays in the ball game in right field. In place of Cleon Jones. So Ron Taylor, if you're keeping a scorecard, will bat in place of Cleon Jones. Now manager Wes Western goes out. He's calling John Sullivan over to the dugout. So Sullivan... Goes into the dugout, and uh, apparently we're going to have a catching change here. Nobody out there for Ron Taylor to throw to, so he's simply uh, popping the ball into his glove. Now he turns around and throws the ball to shortstop Bud Harrelson. We're getting a catcher out of the bullpen now. Jerry Grody came in out of the bullpen, peeling off the jacket. Now Sandy Alomar is coming out to warm up pitcher Ron Taylor. Sandy Alomar taking the throws. We'd like to remind you that Met Fan Club tickets are available for June and July. And if you'd like tickets for the fan club room, right? Met Fan Club, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. We'll give you a list of the dates in just a moment. The announcement has just been made that Sullivan had his right hand stepped on going into second base in that last half inning, so that is why John Sullivan is coming out of the game. Fan, fan club date, June 28th, Bob Shaw, June 29th, Chuck Hiller, July 1st, Wes Westrom, July 5th, Jack Fisher, July 7th, Jerry Boucher, July 9th, Yogi Berra, July 18th, Bud Harrelson, July 20th, Bob Johnson, July 22nd, Ron Swoboda, July 23rd, Tommy Reynolds. Those are fan club dates upcoming. Jerry Grody out there now to do the catching for the Mets. Top half of the eighth inning, and Roseboro is up. Ron Taylor's pitch is hit in the air to short center field. Harrelson goes out. Luplo comes in and calls, and Luplo makes the catch. One away, Al Ferrara will be the batter. The Rheingold Chugga Mug is a wide mouth glass mug that holds 12 ounces of beer, and it even feels right when you pick it up. 
We're selling them in handy cartons of six, and they're just about the handiest thirst quenchers in town. You'll find Chug-A-Mug on special display at your local stores in New York and New Jersey. Ferrara, from Brooklyn, a right-hand batter, has his young son, Al Jr., here at the ballpark tonight. Here's a pitch that's in for a call strike. Ferrara doubled to drive in three runs in the first inning. He flied to center in the fourth and had a base hit in the sixth. An infield hit. Right-hander Ron Taylor delivers, and it's in there for a call strike. Count of two strikes. Now two strike delivery. Four nod and miss. And Ferrara strikes out. Two away and Gene Michael is the batter coming up. Switch hitting shortstop batting left against Taylor. Fouled out to third, got it out to first unassisted, got it out pitcher to first. The Dodgers lead in the game by a score of seven to nothing. They got up to a big start tonight, piling up four runs in the top half of the first inning. Added one in the fifth and two in the seventh. Here's Taylor's pitch. Hit in the air. Back of second and Harrelson is there calling. He makes the catch with Jerry Buchek at his side. Ron Taylor gets the Dodgers in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. In the middle of the eighth, it's the Dodgers seven and that's nothing. Hi, this is Jerry Ducey. Have you got a few seconds? Would you listen to this for just a little while? That's a brief sample of the mood of the music on the Jerry Ducey Show weekday mornings from 10 to 11.30. The whole show isn't like that. We never get that relaxed. We also include some music with a beat. Got a few seconds more? Listen. Bottom half of the eighth inning, and Ed Cranepool is up to lead off for the Mets. He had a bunt base hit in the first inning. He's one for three tonight. Hitting 337 for the season. Drysdale's pitch is in there for a called strike. Mets had two hits off Drysdale in the first inning, and they've only had two more since. Pitch is low. It's 1-1. The Dodgers lead here 7-0 in the second game of the series. The Mets won last night 5-2, and the rubber game of the set will be played tomorrow night. Here's a swing and a ground ball to second. Ron Hutt scoops the ball up and plays it over to Parker, and there's one away. And now Ed Charles pops the second, struck out swinging, grounded out short to first. Drysdale reads the sign of catcher John Roseboro. The pitch to Charles is high for a ball. Tommy Davis coming out on deck now. It'll be a 1-0 delivery. 
Swung on and fouled off to the left side, rolling into the Dodger dugout, out of play. Dodgers, seven runs, five hits. Mets, no runs, and they have four hits. This is outside, it's two and one. Pitch is low, so it's three and one out of Charles. And the three one delivery. Fastball in for a call strike. It's full at three and two. Here's the payoff pitch. Foul off the handle. Across the Met dugout into the stands out of play. Count remains full at 3-2. Charles swinging the bat has it cocked now. And he draws a walk as the pitch comes in high and tight. The third walk issued in the game by Drysdale. Gives the Mets a base run with one away and brings up Tommy Davis. He doubled down the left field line in the first inning, flat out to right in the fourth and grounded out short to first in the sixth. Drysdale briefly to the rosin bag. He came into tonight's game with a record of three wins and three losses. Tommy Davis steps out at the plate. Now comes back in. Wes Parker playing behind runner Ed Charles at first. Drysdale pitches foul back out of play. So it's strike one. Jerry Buchak is waiting on deck. Drysdale sets up. And the pitch. In for a strike as Davis ran his hand on the bat as though to bunt the ball and pulled it off. It's a two-strike count, and he is discussing that maneuver with Tom Gorman. This will be a two-strike delivery, Drysdale to Tommy Davis, and it's high, one and two. One man out for the Mets here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. A one-two pitch. Swung on and missed. So Tommy Davis strikes out. And we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. Hi, neighbor. At 5.45 a.m., we hope you'll be on hand for the Chanticleer. At 12.15, our theme, Bread, Love, and Dreams, introduces Farm Paper. Here on WGY Schenectady. This is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner at Shea Stadium in New York. The Dodgers lead the Mets 7-0. Buchek up with two men out. Charles at first. The pitch is low, and it hit Roseborough as he turned to sort of backhand it with the glove. He was hit with the pitch, and now manager Austin comes out to check on Roseborough, and so does the Dodger trainer, and Don Drysdale comes down also to see about him. Just as he sort of turned, apparently uh, hung a spike as he was trying to turn because now he's indicating to the trainer that it is his right leg or knee. 
as he was trying to shift position to uh, get the glove over the backhand the ball. He didn't quite make it, but he's all right. Bob Johnson comes out on deck now for the Mets with Ron Taylor scheduled up next. Bob Shaw is working in the Mets bullpen. Don Cardwell is tuning up down there. Now the pitch to Buchek, and it swung on and missed. We're in the bottom half of the eighth inning at Shea Stadium. Pitch is swung on it on the ground to short. A big hop up to Michael. He goes to hunt it second for the fourth, and the side is out. No runs, no hits, no errors. A walk and one left. At the end of eight full innings, the Dodgers seven, the Mets nothing. Now here's a word from Rheingold. Look, you can't pull the wool over their eyes. You can't kid the public around here. You can't put one over on these guys. They'll cut you right out from your ear. In this town, either you have it or you don't. Either you're a pro or you won't get very far. Hey! There are 302 beers trying to make it in New York from all over. But only one beer has made it to the top. The rich, dry lager, Rangoo. In this town, either you have it or you don't. In this town, either you have it or you don't. Either you're a pro or you won't get very far. Either you have it or you don't. Rheingold. Now for the New York Mets, Bob Shaw is coming in to do the pitching. Bob Shaw is making his 10th appearance of the season. He has a record of no wins and four losses. He is the fifth Met pitcher. Ron Taylor worked an inning, allowed no runs, no hits, retired the side in order, making his first pitching appearance since April 17th. Taylor, of course, officially was still in the ball game as he was not removed for a pinch hitter. They had Johnson out there on deck, but uh, Buczek hit into the fourth play to end the inning, but manager Wes Westrom decided to go ahead and make his pitching change anyway. Pitcher, Don Drysdale. Don Drysdale is up to lead off for the Dodgers. Tarbell and I threw eight innings of play. The Dodgers, seven runs, five hits, one error. The Mets, no runs, four hits, one error. Bob Shaw now with his first pitch to the right-hand batter. It's a breaking pitch in there for a call strike. Bob Shaw came to the New York Mets after the season began last year from the San Francisco Giants. And the pitch on the outside corner, a breaking ball for a call strike two. Here's a swing and a miss as uh, Drysdale swung wildly at a breaking pitch well outside. So Bob Shaw gets a strike out, one away, and Wes Parker's coming up. He's a switch hitter, batting left against right-hander Bob Shaw. Pitch is outside for a ball. 1-0. and oh. 
Ron Hunt moves out on deck. One-0 -oh pitch. Line in the center field for a base hit for Parker. Al Loop blows over up with it, plays it back. Parker turns and holds. Single to center. Now Ron Hunt. So he scored two runs tonight for the Dodgers. Had a double. Slide to left and struck out. Officially one for three. Hunt's batting average for the season is 265. Shaw checks, deals, and the pitch is in for a call strike to the right-hand batter. Willie Davis moves out on deck. Parker leads it first, and Ron Hunt steps out of the batter's box just as Shaw was about set to deliver. No pitch. He didn't turn it loose. Now Hunt's back in and waiting. Pitch is in for a call strike. Nothing in two. Parker leading at first, and this is a two-strike delivery that is outside. It's one and two. Dodgers seven, Mets nothing. Vaughn Hunt choking him up on the bat. In and waiting, here's a pitch. Breaking ball low, off the glove of Jerry Grody, the catcher, but he keeps it in front of him. No advance by Parker at first base. Two and two of the count to Ron Hunt. Johnny Sullivan coming out of the ball game after getting his hand stepped on down there as he went in at second. So Jerry Grody's in to do the catching. The Mets are carrying only two catchers on the roster these days. foul ball off of uh, Hunt's bat and rolling over to the Mets dugout. Hunt actually was spinning around to try to get out of the way of that one and fouled it off, so the count holds 2-2. The report from trainer Gus March to the Mets on Johnny Sullivan's hand is that he has a puncture and laceration of the ring finger of the right hand, but he will be available tomorrow. There's a curveball hit down the line and left on over toward the stands and going into the seats and out to play a foul ball. So the count holds 2-2 on Ron Hunt as Wes Parker returns to first. Dodgers batting with one man out here in the top half of the ninth inning. The 2-2 pitch. Is it on the ground to short? Could be for two. Harrelson to Buczek. That's one. On to first. Not in time to get Hunt. So they got the front runner. Wes Parker, 6-4 if you're scoring. Hunt becomes the base runner at first, and Willie Davis is coming up. One for three in a walk. He scored a run and zone one in. Ron Hunt takes his lead at first, and here's a pitch. Low for a ball. Cranepool holding against runner Ron Hunt at first. Oh. 
This will be a 1-0 delivery. And it's low for a ball, 2-0. When the Mets opened their 1963 season at the Polo Grounds in New York on opening day there, Cranebrew was in the Met lineup in right field. Ron Hunt, although on the squad, was not in that opening day lineup. He didn't really make the team until some time later. Here's a 2-0 pitch. Swung on and foul off behind the bag at first. Hunt rounded second. He'll come back to first. When the Mets opened that 1963 season, the second baseman was Larry Burright. And as a matter of fact, on that opening day with Ernie Brolio pitching for the St. Louis Cardinals, the Mets got only two hits, and Burright got them both. But in the matter of a couple of weeks, Ron Hunt was the Mets' second baseman to stay. Here's a 2-1 pitch, and it is fouled on the right field line, out of play. And again, Hunt, rounding second, will have to come back to first. Count holds at 2-2. 1964, the Mets' first year in Shea Stadium, Hunt was the National League All-Star second baseman. At Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia, the San Francisco Giants and the Philadelphia Phillies are going to extra innings. Tied 4-4 at the end of nine. Dick Farrell against Frank Lindsay, both in relief. Right here, the Dodgers lead the Mets by a score of 7 nothing. Dodgers batting in the top of the ninth with a runner at first and two men out. Bob Shaw sets, checks the runner, deals the pitch it on the ground to short. Harrelson scoops it up, bobbles it, and now throws to first just in time. He bobbled it up into the air and had to grab it a second time before making the throw. So Davis is out, no run, a hit, no errors, and one left. In the middle of the night, Dodgers 7, Mets nothing. The sun is sunnier, the fun is funnier, the spring is springier, with the portable radio along. The news is newsier, the blues are bluesier, the folk songs the jokes are jokier, with the portable radio along. The old hearts are near, the trips are trippier, the hips are hipsier, with the Barnabas Radio along. Number 25, Bob Johnson. Bottom of the ninth, and the Mets are sending Bob Johnson up to bat for Bob Shaw. Johnson. An infielder by trade is a right-hand batter. Drysdale's pitch misses everything. Low and away comes all the way back to the screen. Ball one. Johnson, since coming over from the Baltimore Orioles, has batted 308 for the Mets. That's four for 13, one double and three runs batted in. Drysdale taking the sign. Pitch is swung on and loops out in the right field. Coming strong is Fairley, and he can't get there. It's in for a base hit. Bob Johnson gets the leadoff single for the Mets in the bottom of the ninth for the Dodgers leading seven and other. And it's hit number five for the Mets off John Drysdale. Now Tommy Reynolds is up. Came on as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning and stayed in the ball game. He was on on an error by shortstop Gene Michael. This pitch is in for a call strike to the right-hand batter. Drysdale sets up. And the pitch is hit on the ground to third. The Fever takes it in foul territory off the line at third. 
Reynolds across the bag at first will have to come back and try again. A two strike count to him. Uh, Johnson returning the bag at first. Now Drysdale delivers the two-strike pitch outside, and it's one and two to Reynolds. Dodgers got four runs in the top half of the first inning tonight. And as it has turned out, that was enough to keep them out in front. So right now, they lead seven-nothing. Here's the pitch in for a call, strike three. Strike out number six for Drysdale. Jerry Grody's coming up for his first time in the game. Grody's hitting 178 with one home run and five runs batted in. Johnson's on the bag at first, waiting until Drysdale gets set before taking his lead. Pitches in for a call strike to Grody. Now Luplo is on deck. Strike one delivery, and it is foul back out of play. Two strike count. Johnson leads it first. Two strike delivery and it's fouled off right off the end of the bat. Out of play. Again a two strike pitch. Hit in the air to center field. Willie Davis ranging back. Has it lined up near the edge of the warning track and hauls it down. Halfway on the fly ball to center, Bob Johnson goes back to first. Two away. The Mets are down to their last out of the ball game. And now Lou Blow is coming up. The Dodgers lead seven to nothing. Lou Blow came on as a pinch hitter in the fifth inning, singled and stayed in the ball game. He didn't do a force play in the seventh. He's one for two tonight. Batting 216 for the season. Swinging a foul ball back and out of play. Rosdale briefly to the rosin bag. He's been in all the way. And the pitch swung on it on the ground to deep second. Hunt on the rim of the outfield grass takes it throws to first in time. Luplo has grounded out to end the ball game. As the Los Angeles Dodgers win it by a score of seven to nothing. Drysdale gets the win, his fourth of this season. In the bottom half of the ninth inning, the Mets no runs, they hit no errors, and one left. The final score is the Dodgers seven and the Mets nothing. Well, here at Shea Stadium tonight, on fraternal night, before a crowd of 32,021 paid, Chuck Castrata got his first call to start a game for the New York Mets. And Strata's difficulty in finding the plate led to his undoing. He walked Wes Parker. Ron Hunt struck out. He walked Willie Davis. He walked Ron Fairley, and the bases were filled. Then Jen Lefevre got it out to first base. And one run scored. Roseboro walked, loading the bases again. And Al Ferrara doubled the left center, driving in three. And that was all for Estrada, who gave up in two-thirds of an inning. Four runs on one hit, struck out one, walked four, and was the losing pitcher. Jack LeMabe came on and worked four and a third effective innings, in which he was reached for a run on a hit, struck out three, and walked one. 
Jack Hamilton worked two innings, gave up two runs on three hits. Ron Taylor worked an inning, the first time Taylor had been in action since April 17th. He retired the side in order, and then Bob Shaw came on to finish up. For the New York Mets, they had two hits off Drysdale in the first inning, as Ed Cranesville had a bunch single and Tommy Davis had a double, but then they had one more in the fifth, one in the seventh, and one in the ninth, and that is all as Big Don slammed the door from then on in. Drysdale struck out six, and he walked three. He now has a record of four wins and three losses. The Mets announced that they are recalling outfielder Johnny Lewis from their Jacksonville farm, and a determination will be made now as to which member of the squad will be dropped to make room for Johnny Lewis. Here are the final totals tonight. For the Dodgers, seven runs on six hits and one error. For the Mets, no runs, five hits and one error. Drysdale is the winner. He's won four and lost three. Estrada is the loser. He is one and one. Final score again, Dodgers seven, Mets nothing. New York Mets baseball has been brought to you by Rheingold Beer as another in his continuing parade of major sports events. It's their way of saying thank you for making Rheingold New York's largest selling beer. Rheingold, either you have it or you don't, and Rheingold's got it. New York Mets baseball was also brought to you by Armory Garage, Central at Colvin in Albany, the man who can move you up to luxury at a price you can afford. You're tuned away, 10 on your radio dial, WGY Schenectady, the big bright sound.